Hello everybody, it is an honor to participate in the fifth workshop on Fairness in User Modeling, Adaptation and Personalization in UMAP 2022. In the upcoming 10 minutes, I'm going to present you something slightly different compared to what we've seen so far. Specifically, we are going to explore the notion of fairness by evaluating the impact of personalization in ubiquitous computing interventions for promoting health and wellness. Our work takes us on a journey across 12 years of self-tracking interventions for encouraging physical activity. But why bother? Self-tracking technology allows researchers and practitioners to unobtrusively collect user data about physical activity, sleep, stress, health and other user behaviours. As a result, they open new opportunities for designing and implementing health promotion intervention studies. According to a recent large-scale mapping review, 40% of all ubiquitous computing interventions focus on physical activity, and for a good reason. Regular physical activity has both individual and societal benefits. Despite the considerable benefits, one in four adults and three in four adolescents do not meet the recommended guidelines for physical activity. To this end, ubiquitous computing interventions have been called to the rescue, hoping that self-tracking technology through increased self-awareness can encourage the users to adopt a more active lifestyle. However, self-tracking interventions suffer from certain limitations as reported in related literature. Initially, the one-size-fits-all mentality is still prevalent in the majority of self-tracking interventions design. However, it might not always be fair across user segments. Then, it is unclear which system features hold the most persuasive power for diverse users. For example, rewards is a frequently implemented feature in commercial and research-grade wearables. However, are they equally successful for people of all ages? We are going to touch upon this question, among others, later on. Finally, the adoption of self-tracking might be, might be widespread, but technology abandonment is far from a rare phenomenon. This highlights the need for continuous evaluation of the user experience through appropriate performance metric for diverse user groups. To shine some light on these limitations and pave the way for future work, we have performed a diversity-aware meta-analysis of physical activity interventions literature to evaluate future efficiency across user segments and provide tailored recommendations for future work. Specifically, we have analyzed 12 years of self-tracking interventions literature to identify those features that performed the best in promoting physical activity. Based on, our based on our analysis, we provide a series of inclusive recommendations for self-tracking intervention design and evaluation for diverse user segments. To compare and contrast 12 years of studies and analyze them under a single framework, we have chosen the widely accepted Persuasive Systems Design Framework. The PSD aids the design of systems capable of influencing users' attitudes or behaviors, such as encouraging physical activity. The framework introduces 28 persuasion strategies, such as rewards, self-monitoring, competition and cooperation, grouped into four categories primary task support, dialogue support, credibility, and social support. Using the PSD as our foundation, we have created and utilized the past self, past self corpus for our meta-analysis. The past self corpus is a source of metadata for 117 studies describing ubiquitous computing interventions for promoting physical activity, which were published between 2008 and 2020. Among this metadata, we encounter the PSD strategies. In other words, for each study and described intervention, the corpus describes which PSD strategies have been used, as well as if the result was positive, neutral or negative. In detail, we went through around 21k records identified through a well-defined keyword combination from Google Scholar and other digital libraries. After duplicate elimination, we were left with more than 16.7k studies, of which 16.4k were exclu excluded based on title and abstract review. 546 full-text articles were assessed for eligibility, of which 429 were excluded based on predefined exclusion criteria. This left us with our final pool of 117 articles. 
Then, for each persuasion strategy of the PSD framework and each user segment, we defined a heuristic score called PAST score, indicating the strategy success in promoting physical activity for the specific user segment. Note that our sample allowed us to group our users based on age, gender, health conditions, fitness and profession. The PAST score is a weighted combination of the strategy's efficacy and the frequency of the specific strategy among all interventions. Efficacy is defined as the percentage of successful interventions among all those interventions utilizing the specific strategy. For example, if 6 out of 10 interventions utilizing rewards are successful, that would give us a 0.6 efficacy, while for frequency, if rewards appear in 8 out of 10 interventions in the literature, then we would have a 0.8 frequency. Note that we use a weighted combination of these two quantities to avoid over-rewarding individual good results or over-punishing less frequently encountered strategies. This heat map presents the past score across different user segments in columns and PSD strategies in rows. Warmer colors indicate higher efficiency in promoting physical activity. As an overview, we see that the primary task support and dialogue categories have higher efficiency expressed through warmer colors compared to social support and system credibility. The first thing we notice is that some strategies such as self-monitoring, goal setting and at a smaller extent rewards have a relatively high past score across population segments. This is in agreement with past literature. However, there are still some blue cells indicating decreased efficiency for certain population segments, as we'll explore later. Contrary to this observation, there, ex there exist extended blue areas in the heat map. One, for the system credibility features, such as trustworthiness or authority, and the men-only interventions. What does this tell us? While it would be easy to believe that system credibility features are not efficient, in reality, extended deep blue areas indicate lack of experimentation. So this heat map does not only tell us that system credibility features are some of the least experimented with in the related literature, but also that among all user segments, men-only interventions are the rarest. So which are those strategies that require our attention? In this scatter plot, we see the efficiency on the x-axis and the frequency on the y-axis. Naturally, we are more interested in the bottom right corner, namely strategies with high efficacy and low frequency. In this corner, we encounter strategies such as similarity, which for example can take the form of avatars or conversational agents, cooperation, which can take the form of shared goals or challenges, and social comparison, which can take the form of public or semi-public performance boards. Now the question is, can we provide such recommendations at a user level granularity? These radar plots highlight the difference in PSD strategies past score between the general population in blue and a specific user segment in red. Here, we focus on age-based segments, specifically the adolescents and the elderly, due to time constraints, but the results for other segments can be found in the accompanied paper. When it comes to adolescent interventions, utilizing rewards shows high efficiency, plus 5 score, while positive social support features, such as social learning and cooperation, offer more promising results compared to social comparison. An interesting finding is that there is a large drop in primary task support efficiency and goal setting. We conjecture that such features designed and fine-tuned on adult populations might not be directly applicable to adolescents and hence require further research. When it comes to the elderly population, the radar plots as a different picture. Social support strategies show decreased effectiveness, giving ground to dialogue strategies such as liking, praise and especially similarity with a score of plus 5. The common denominator amongst these features is that they provide a sense of human connection to elderly users who might experience solitude. On the contrary, rewards show a significant decrease in efficiency for this population segment, contrary to younger samples. So, which are the key takeaways from today? While ubiquitous interventions for promoting health and wellness are attracting scientific interest, they still adopt a one-size-fits-all approach. However, PSD strategies expressed as system features vary in terms of efficiency, as we have seen, across diverse populations. Rewards, for example, might be encouraging for adolescents, but don't seem to hold as much persuasive power towards the elderly. Also, similarity, cooperation and social comparison are among the least frequent but most promising system features. 
With regards to user segments, men-only interventions are rare in the literature, while the limited number of interventions targeting racial minorities did not allow us to perform an analysis based on race. Finally, I want to close by saying that while we strongly believe in the value of empirical data for generating design guidelines, we suggest that our recommendations be treated similarly to design hypotheses which require additional testing. Thank you for your attention and I would be happy to answer your questions.